This is lesson one, how to make transactions with Bitcoin. In this lesson, we'll be going over some of the methods that you can transact with your smartphone, with your computer, and in other ways, move Bitcoin around and integrate and communicate with the Bitcoin network. Let's begin. The way Bitcoin works is similar in the manner to email, except we're moving money and we're using public key cryptography to do so. Essentially, if you want to send a message to someone via email, you use their email address. In Bitcoin, you do much the same thing except you use a Bitcoin address which is available via a public key. And you'll notice here we have a 34 character public key string. This is essentially the Bitcoin address that you would send money to. Now, each public key, as we spoke about recently, also holds with it a private key. And the private key is what digitally signs the transaction and authorizes money to be sent from an address. The public key is what is recorded in the blockchain and made publicly transparable whenever somebody makes a transaction or receives a transaction. This public key is essentially the address for each Bitcoin wallet. Now when we go under the hood, as we were saying, each address in each Bitcoin wallet carries with it a public key and a symmetrical private key. And this is created through the elliptical curve digital signal signature algorithm. And the public key is used to encrypt the plain text transaction and the private key, likewise, is used to decrypt it or authorize the transaction. You never want to share your private key with anyone, but if you want to receive a transaction, your public key is what you're presenting. One of the ways your public key can be stored is with a QR code, and you may have seen Bitcoin addresses comprising signs, basically people holding up QR codes. And this is one of the unique ways to make a Bitcoin transaction because smartphones and other devices can simply scan QR codes and a transaction can be automatically sent via this uh, information that's stored within a QR code. And another emerging way is through near field communications technology, which comprises having your device in the vicinity or the proximity of another device and authorizing the transaction to be made. Currently, we use near field communications with credit cards. And if you've ever used a Visa or a MasterCard with TAP technology, these actually use near field communications technology. So how does one actually acquire Bitcoin? We may know how to transact with Bitcoin, but well, if we don't have any Bitcoin, we can't exactly move any money or mess around with the network. So how do we go about acquiring Bitcoin? And there are a number of ways we can do this. The most common way is buying it outright. And you can do this by buying it on an exchange. You move your money onto a business brokerage account and you make a bid offer and someone will fill that bid offer and essentially you'll be swapping out your currency for Bitcoin just in the same manner you would be swapping out your currency if, if you were buying a foreign currency. You can also buy Bitcoin instead of using an exchange you can buy Bitcoin from people in person and you can also use ATMs as Bitcoin exchange machines as well in person. Other than buying it outright, you can ask your employer if they would consider paying you in Bitcoin. And this is a, an emerging and increasing trend, actually. You can receive donations in Bitcoin simply from presenting your QR code or your public address. Or you can also mine the Bitcoin network and compete for new blocks of Bitcoin, as we mentioned in the previous network, which is becoming increasingly specialized and difficult to do. So let's say you have some Bitcoin, where can you actually spend it? And this is a question that you'll probably hear a lot. Who accepts Bitcoin? 
Where can I spend it? And the answer really is you can hypothetically use Bitcoin to buy anything. The only question is, will the other party be willing to accept Bitcoin as a valid form of payment? And the answer to that question is increasingly, yes, they will. So because this is still a very novel form of payment and an emerging technology, there is definitely some degree of salesmanship required if you want to use Bitcoin, especially with merchants that are on the fence about it still. This brings us to the conclusion of our lesson today. If you're interested in learning more about how Bitcoin wallets work, and I would highly encourage this for anyone who wants to get involved in the Bitcoin industry is download a wallet application. You can download one for your smartphone device, tablets, or a desktop even, and basically send and receive transactions directly from that wallet application. In order to download one of these software suites, you can go to bitcoin.org slash en slash choose your wallet. That's all for today. We'll see you in the next lesson.